Daredevil Season 3, Episode Number 9. Ladies and gentlemen, we hear the next week's episode of Daredevil last week. What an episode, man. The way we ended it. Probably one of the most shocking moments, if not... I can't say the most shocking moment in the show because this show has had some crazy shocking moments, but one of the most shocking moments in the show for me, man. I was not expecting that at all. Sister Maggie is Matt's mom, man. I don't... See, we had the break where we switched to Defenders to do, you know, those eight episodes for a bit. So I can't really remember what, what Matt's mom's storyline was. I don't remember if they just said she was out of the picture, if she had passed, if she had just left them, or what it was, but... I just, in my mind, I was just thinking she was kind of gone, right? Which, I mean, in, in, in a way, she really was. But I don't know, dude. I didn't expect that to be his mom. I didn't expect there to be anything else about, you know, his family coming back or, like, his mom or something like that. So to hear that last week was a shock. And Matt heard it, too. I don't know if she specifically did it wanting Matt to hear it or if she just doesn't realize how good Matt's hearing is, right? Because she knows Matt can do some crazy shit, you know, from his smell to the way he sees things, to the way he can hear things, because, you know, they've had the interaction throughout this kind of storyline of him being here at the church, and, you know, we've had those scenes multiple times where he's like, do you feel the subway running beneath us and stuff like that when she brought him food and stuff, so she knows his senses are extremely fucking heightened, but maybe she just doesn't think it's to that degree, like, he's on a complete another level of the church, and she's not really talking loud, she is talking out loud, but I wouldn't even say she's speaking like a no, in a normal voice like this. She's she's not whispering, but she's not talking loud, man. So I don't know if she purposely wanted him to hear that or if she just doesn't think he was going to be able to hear that. But I'm kind of curious as to what Matt's going to do with this information. Is this going to kind of push him away from the church and Sister Maggie and make him want to leave, you know, out of resentment? Is this going to make him kind of double down and talk to her about it or what? Because I feel like it could definitely go either way. You know, Matt could probably have a lot of rage and anger built up at her to because she hasn't told him this entire time, not only when he was growing up, but also when he's been here now, or if he's gonna accept it and be happy about it or what, because I feel like he's at a point in his life right now where he has been wanting to cut his friends off and stuff, but maybe, you know, now that he knows that's his mom, things might change, I don't know, this story is so damn good though. We also had the scene with Karen and Fisk last week, which was fucking fantastic, man. Just season three, you guys told me this is gonna be some peak television. And this has even blown me. It, it surpassed my expectations. You know, even, even going into it with your guys' kind of opinions telling me that it's going to be extremely good. I'm like, okay, can it be that good? And here we are. It's this fucking good, bro. I watched this and Breaking Bad on the same day. And some days I like this more than Breaking Bad. You know, completely different shows. But that just goes to show how good this stuff is, man. Because Breaking Bad is peak television. So for this to be right up there with it, in my opinion... It's on another level, but regardless, guys, I'm going to stop wasting time. We're going to go ahead. We're going to hop into this episode. Before we do, I do ask for you guys on a new channel. You do hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. You guys, this next man. Drop a like on the video for your boy. Full reaction will be up on Patreon as well as early access to the next two episodes. If you guys want to check that out, link in the description down below. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to hop into this episode. I hope we pick up with Matt. Flashback? No, 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 no. Maybe? Because he's got a stick vibe going. Oh, no, not flashback. He wants to go talk to the priest. Matthew, what are you doing here? Did you know she was my mother? Yeah. He did. Wow. I couldn't tell you, even when I wanted to. Don't hide behind your collar, father. Wait, you're a priest? Take your money and go. And he's out here hustling people. <laughs> I prayed for Maggie to find it in herself to tell you years ago. She couldn't find it in herself to walk nine blocks to visit me as a kid. I knew that I was alone in this world. You were never alone. Yes, I was! And you let me believe it. Growing up without your parents, Matthew, you don't grow to see them as people. You need to understand that, to understand her. Oh, flashbacks. Shit. Is this sister Maggie? Maybe this is how she met Jack. Damn, man. I mean, I feel like that's not a it's not the priest spot to tell, right? Like that's something Sister Maggie should have told him himself, not the priest. But I also get it, because Matt can find in him so many times. I thought you said you only needed 60 seconds. Yeah, well, shit's a backup plan. You never know. 
Hey, this is how he ended up getting with her, man. He looks a lot older than her, though, no? Like, how old was she at this age? I'm assuming this is when she was talking to Matt about having that other life, right? When she wasn't sure if she wanted to be a nun. Because she told him she, she kind of split from her path for a little bit. And wasn't sure what she wanted. Yep, and that's Matthew, isn't it? Thank you. What is wrong with you? Maybe it's because she had, you know, premarital sex. Feels bad about it or something. I would assume because they're not married right now, right? Maggie. Maggie. Is this when she was taken away? Well, taken. I use the word taken lightly. I mean, Jack knew too then, right? You know, when I heard Maggie call me her son. My thought was, uh, my, my first thought was how stupid I'd been. That it had been right in front of me for so long. And then I remembered that it had been in front of you for even longer. Mm. Now it seems like all of those conversations were just a goddamn lie. I mean, I feel like it's, 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 it's a tough spot for him because it's like it's not his truth to tell, right? Like, I get, you know, he was there for Matthew this entire time. He was like a, almost like a father figure to him, right? Mentoring him there for him when he needed him and stuff like that throughout his childhood and everything. But it's like, I feel like it's just not his truth to tell, right? Like, if any, if he's going to be mad at somebody, he should be mad at Maggie. Because in a sense, too, Jack, his dad knew who Maggie was, where she was, and everything like that, too. And he chose not to tell him. Sorry about the mess. My contractor promised he would be done months ago. How do you take it? Black is fine. Thanks. Uh, none for me. This is a tough conversation in more ways than one, right? Because he doesn't want to give up Dex, but it's also like he doesn't want to lose that promotion with Fit. All the like, it's a combination of things here, man. Wholesome Fisk is currently engaged in a criminal conspiracy, and has manipulated the bureau into becoming his unwilling accomplice. I also have reason to believe that Fisk has corrupted an agent on his detail. Who? Dex. You are referring to Special Agent Ben Poindexter. Yes, sir. OPR needs to start an internal investigation into Fisk, into Poindexter, into all of it. And for the record, this is on my watch. He's taking responsibility for it. Ray, I'm sorry, but I'm placing you on administrative leave effective immediately. Damn, man. This is the flip side now, right? He's having to turn in his gun and badge just like Dex did before. First, we call you an ambulance. Oh no, is she? Damn, she's working for Fisk! Ray, put down the gun, please! She's working for Fisk! You bring this into my house, my home. Fuck! Sit down. Bro, why am I surprised at this point, man? Fisk has everybody, man. Your prince, your weapon, the recording. Do I need to explain to you what this means? Fucking Felix. I'm not your boss anymore. Wilson Fisk is. He works for Fisk now. He has to or else they're going to release that and get him put in jail and shit, right? Damn, this was such a long intro. I forgot that we even had this, the, 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 the actual intro to play, man. Oh my God. Why am I surprised at this point? Fisk has everybody in my head when we were sitting here watching this scene. I was like, damn, what if, not, not if Tammy, but the other dude right what if he works for fisk in my head is what i was thinking and then he got shot as i was thinking that and it ended up being her like holy shit man everybody works for fisk it's so frustrating man every time we think we're a step ahead just like that i mean here's the thing though right last episode fisk said he knew that um that our boy Ray was on to Dex, and he said he was going to handle it. I guess this is him handling it. He's not going to kill him, but he's going to get stuff on him to blackmail him. Because if he releases that information, bro, I mean, he can he can argue all he wants. But, like, we, we know because we have viewers' perspective. But, like, his fingerprints are on the gun. He has that voice recording, right? They, they do with Tammy saying that stuff. And it's like, dude, they have so much evidence on him, even though we know it's false. Fisk knows that Matt is there double because of me. Well, you can't actually know that for sure. You didn't say anything. No, you weren't there. He, uh, 
the way he looked at me. It was like he got confirmation, like he had his suspicions, but it was like from Karen last week, he got pretty much confirmation, right? Like he had the tapes from the jail and stuff. He had pieces and he was like close, but that that look from Karen was confirmation. I should go. I'm not gonna talk to Matt or anything. Get through this. I don't know how, but we will. Stronger together. We need everybody here. We need Matt. Everybody working together. That's what we need. Everybody's so apart right now, trying to do their own thing. You know, Foggy. He's trying to do his shit with the DA. Karen. He was. She was trying to get Fisk mad. Matt. He's doing his vigilante shit. We need to work together as one. What is it, Paul? Matthew is that first, knows. Is that the first time we heard his real name? He's probably gone already, huh? It's crazy because she doesn't even know she was essentially the one to tell him, right? <laughs> you know she loves him, you know, like a mom, but it's... Man. I guess you know everything now, Maddie. You're his dad. Nah, doesn't change a goddamn thing. He looks so similar to his dad, man. Obviously, I know they're actors, not real father and son, but like they did a good casting job there, especially with the way their hair is combed over. Just keep your fingers like Dex. that, hugging the seam, and just snap your wrist when you release it. And that makes it curve? Like crazy. Look at that smirk on Dex's face. Well, you've been bragging about Seema's cooking for so long, I figured I'd come up with an excuse to finally come try it. You don't need an excuse, Dex. What you've done for our family... You're always welcome here. It's tough because Dex, he was a good agent, man. And he had people that cared for him, but he just got manipulated. What does he want from me, Dex? Your friend? The one you brought to my home? Mm. Matt. I don't know who he is or where he is. Yeah, you do. Now let's go. We're spending the day together, partner. Oh. It smells delicious. Is it bad that I still like Dex, man? Like, shit. He's just... His character is... And his actor is so good, so captivating. But it's also like I do have sympathy for the situation that he's in and how he was manipulated because he was good. You are a natural, totally amazing. People posted the video online about? from the DA. Because when you get yep. the cold facts and you really get worked up about what you're doing, you can... Yep, Foggy did good, man. He's, he's attacking this in a good way. Should have told me. Maybe I promised her that I wouldn't. There's no excuse. Yeah, I know, kid. But after I took that bullet, Maggie had years to tell you the truth, and she didn't. That wasn't my choice, it was hers. You both lied. You both left. I never left you. You didn't go down in that fight like you were supposed to, mm. knowing they'd kill you for it. I did that for you. So you would know what your old man is made of. Well, old man shows his ego over a lifetime with his son. That's what I know. You have a code, too. You beat the shit out of people. You tell yourself it's okay because you didn't kill anyone. There is something wrong with us, Maddie. I don't throw fights. And I don't let everyone else suffer because of some bullshit code. Not anymore. Mm. When I get the Fisk, I'm gonna kill him. So much shit happening, man. And it's crazy because it's like, it's a good visual representation because obviously his dad isn't actually there. It's just him arguing with himself, right? Trying to figure out why his dad didn't tell him, you know, trying to put himself in his dad's shoes and be like, okay, maybe he didn't tell me because of this. Maybe he promised my mom. You know what I mean? Because obviously his dad isn't really there. It's just what he's thinking. Such a good scene, man. He learned the truth. That I'm his mother chills and now she knows she needs to go be there for matt he never talked about me I, about you i was a danger to matthew when i gave him up nowadays they know a great deal about postpartum but at the time she had depression i was convinced that i was betraying god she had postpartum depression man and she thought it was something else the church has been helping people hide for 2,000 years. <sighs> hide here. Ooh, where Matt was. You make a few calls and you'll have shelter halfway around the world by the end of the week. Mm. Let me do something for you. For Matthew. 
even if she doesn't stay here specifically hiding, they probably have, you know, like she said, people around the world that she can be sent to to help to be hidden. Damn, man. But you understand her point of view now, right? Of why she did what she did. I feel it. Like, nowadays they know about postpartum depression and shit, but back then she probably just thought it was punishment, right? I'm happy to tell you that Special Agent Poindexter has been reinstated to duty. Wow. Someday I'll pay you back for everything you did. And he means that in the worst way possible. All that stuff you said about Fisk on the video, you gotta take it back. What are you talking about? You have to make a different video, man. Fisk manipulating him? About a year ago, some of our suppliers stopped taking our orders. Just stopped. No reason I could understand. We couldn't change their minds for love or money. After a few months, the shop was in a tight spot financially, right? We didn't have the collateral to get a loan. Why didn't you come to me? I could have helped. I didn't have to because of what happened next. Out of the blue, I get this call from a bank I never heard of offering to help us out. Red Lion Bank. Of course. So the loan officer there, he coaches me on how to move the numbers around, make our assets look healthier, you know. And bam, the loan comes through without a hitch. He said, unless I could convince you to walk back everything you said about Fisk, he'd have Red Lion called the loan. Now they got dirt on him, man. They set that up early. If anyone looks too carefully at it, you're going to jail. Mom and dad signed it too. Wow. Man. You see how Fisk manipulates people? Like, he set that up how long ago? He said it was like a year ago, man. He knew Foggy was going to be a problem at some point, so he wanted that dirt on him. Damn, dude. Oh! These are all the people. That. Yep. That are working Fisk for Fisk. Something on all of you? Either has something or they're just choosing to do it for money. The rules, Ray. We only refer to him by his code name. What code name? Kingpin. Oh, we're back to that. We don't say his name. Just like in season one. Don't say his name. Damn, that's death. That's death, bro, or at least a fractured skull. Dex likes that shit, man. Good morning, Mr. Star. Ray wanted to get to him first, make sure Dex didn't hurt him. I wonder how much shit Fisk actually has does have on those people, or if it's more so, or if it's more so they're doing it for money. I think it might be a mix. Fisk said you marked for more than a year. Why do you think your sister-in-law lost health coverage? He made you desperate for this job and you did everything you could to get him this penthouse, get him everything he asked for. Played from the start so long ago. It's a game, dude. He plays the long haul. Man, I wonder if he has some shit on Tammy's like kids or something or if she is just doing it for money. I used to have two children, Ray. They made now she like a hit and run. I got a divorce. Maybe that keeps him a little safer. But there's still Allie, so... Think about Seema and Sammy. Yep. Okay. It's not for money. He killed one of her kids, man. That's a dark line. I used to have two kids. Wow. And then she divorced her husband too. The thing is, it's all believable too for how he gets these people to work for him. You know what I mean? How much time he's invested in it. Look at him smelling the fresh air. How much time he's invested in it, right? Like he's been watching Nadine for a year. Set up his sister to lose healthcare and all that stuff, man. It's so crazy. You put on that mask because it lets you feel all right with who you really are. It lets you hurt people. It makes you feel like it's for something important, something, something good, good, maybe, maybe even, even for, for God. God. <sighs> but that ain't King the truth. Voice. And we both know it. You and your father cut from the same cloth. A corrupt Ooh. boxer who takes the most satisfaction in inflicting pain as he does money for taking dimes. You were born from nothing. You remain nothing. I hope somebody's not actually there. Okay, okay, okay. I was thinking maybe somebody actually showed up to talk to him and it's someone else, but that's just what he wants to do to Fisk. He actually snapped his neck in that vision. I hope he doesn't, man. I hope Karen shows up or something, man. Something's got to happen. Because oh, if he goes there, bro, he's not surviving this shit. Like, again, it's one thing if it was just the FBI agents, he could probably take them out. But, like, Dex, he's got to handle him one-on-one. -on -one. Fisk, 
What the hell is this? It's an opportunity, Mr. Star. Building up his group again. Just like when he had Madame Gal and the Russians and everybody in season one, man. Fisk plays the long haul, man. You know what I mean? He sets this shit up from so long ago. Like, Foggy's brother situation a year ago, he said. Oh, is he here? Is this the location? Or is this... Okay, this is a bar. Is this the location? Maybe it is, but this is like above it. Because he didn't even come dressed up or anything. I've brought you here to offer you my protection from investigations. This is exactly what Foggy said he was going to do. You can count me out. He's going to kill him. Yeah, that was Dex. Yeah, and he's got the suit. Either join me or die. Just one question. Where do I drop the cash? Crazy, man. The thing is, Foggy's like, Foggy was exactly right about what he's doing. And that's why they were coming after him, too. Because it's like, Foggy seems like he might be the only person who actually has a chance of kind of stopping him. But Fisk is moving quick. Is he mad that Matt didn't show up? Maybe Matt's at a different place then. Oh, he's at the hotel. Maybe try and get some stuff from the apartment or maybe get the drop on him here inside. God, bro. It's so dope seeing him with the Muay Thai ropes on. Such a different look. Just all black and seeing that. When will he be back? Minutes. She's terrified too, man. Maybe she's just a prisoner in all this at the end of the day as well. Karen Page located at the Clinton Church. Keep all the NYPD units clear of that location until otherwise advised. Copy. Wow. What does Fisk want with Karen? He's gonna kill her. He wants her killed. Damn! Don't tell me that's the end. Come on, man. <laughs> they always end on the biggest cliffhangers, bro. Oh, shit. Daredevil Season 3 Episode 9 is in the books, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, they always end on the biggest cliffhangers, bro. What an episode, though, huh? It's just, bro, we really dove into how Fisk manipulates these people over time, right? It's so believable because we didn't just go from, like, a good FBI agent to this overnight. We see firsthand, right, throughout the start of this season with Dex how it happened and then we see all these other agents in here and they don't say exactly what happened or how it happened, but like we get little trickles of it. Like when Tammy was telling him, telling Ray, like Fisk had you marked for this amount of time for a year. Why do you think, you know, the insurance fell through for your sister-in-law, this and that he forced you into this and slowly manipulated all the way to this point that we are right now same thing with her right she gave a little bit of a story she said enough for us to know what happened she said i used to have two daughters made it look like an accident i got a divorce from my husband not because i didn't love him anymore but because maybe that keeps him a little bit more safe right it's like dude this this dude fisks he he, he destroys these people's lives and forces them into this situation and i love that they show that Throughout this story, you get to see it from so many perspectives, whether it's, you know, the whole Dex thing from start to finish. You you completely understand why he's doing what he's doing and how he got turned. Then you get these little kind of bits of why these other people turn. Like Ray, obviously, he just got turned, so he's still, like, pissed about it and everything like that. But you probably figure at the start, Tammy was probably just like Ray, pissed about it and everything. And over time, she just kind of accepted it to protect her daughter and protect her husband or ex-husband, rather, right? it's just tough man all those other fbi agents in there too like at the end of the day they're not necessarily bad people you can say they're corrupt agents because they are working for fish yeah but they're not necessarily bad people it's more so that they're trying to protect their loved ones and their family right and it's like ray said you know you can go to the nypd or this or that but she's like not with this like with fisk you can't he's gonna move quicker and not only that but you just saw you walked into that room these people that you've been working with for how many years and you didn't know they were working for Fisk, right? And it's like, if that's the case, what about the NYPD? What if you go there to talk about Fisk and you just so happen to talk to one of the cops that is corrupted? Bye bye to your family. You know what I mean? It's that fear that keeps them in place and keeps them in line, man. But I love that we're going back to this essentially season one Fisk, right? Because in season one, when we got started, 
Fisk was already set up. He was kingpin. You know, we had the Russians, right? The two brothers and everything like that. We had Madame Gao and stuff. He already had a circle set up with the other crime bosses in the city. And he had them not saying his name, right? You know, the two Russian brothers, they were like, they, they, they were going back and forth and whatnot. And I forget, was it when he was talking to Wesley? He was like, don't say his name. And Wesley, uh, one of the Russian brothers was saying Fisk and he was like, you call him Kingpin or whatever. And it's like, bro, it creates that stigma, right? It creates that fear. It makes him seem like he's not human and it makes people more afraid to attack him. So it's like he's rebuilt up this reputation. You see he's building his new kind of crime circle around him too. And it's like, dude, this is, it's just so crazy to see it from what it was to him in jail throughout season two and stuff to now rebuilding to where he was again in season one and it's all super believable too right like it's not like oh this happened overnight or oh there's no way this is happening you see how he slowly corrupts people and slowly you know manipulates them into doing what he wants man because even when the fbi first got him in my mind i was like yeah he is probably playing them i just don't know how much now that we see to the level he's been playing them it's like jesus dude he's come up with just He's thought of damn near everything. He's always been a step ahead of them. Now, Foggy got a step ahead of Fisk in a sense. And that's why they're kind of coming after his brother. But they also had that fail safe in place up to a year ago before Foggy even started doing this DA shit because they knew he may be a problem. So let's get that fail safe in place just in case it happens, right? It's just like, man, Fisk is, he's like the supernatural thing, man in the show it's he's he's probably one of the best villains in anything i think i've ever seen i'd say he's probably a top three if not top five villain i'm just and that's being modest man you know just in case i can't think of certain things but i'd say he's probably a top three villain you know what i mean because he's captivating he's smart his plans are like realistic and whatnot like none of the shit in the show don't get me wrong like matt he kind of has like his supernatural abilities you know where with his heightened senses and everything like that and fist can do some crazy shit and whatnot but it's like we're grounded in reality a decent amount for the most part you know what i mean like don't get me wrong dex can do some crazy shit too but it's also not like we got laser vision type shit right so i love the fact that we're kind of grounded in reality a bit more because it just makes all this stuff more more real right and don't get me wrong i love like the marvel shit the, the like Avengers, the superhero stuff like that. But I love shit like this too. That's more realistic. Like you got Matt just changing up his fighting style, right? Like he knows he cannot beat him in the long range combat. So he knows he keep, needs to keep it close range. So he's practicing Muay Thai more, which he wasn't using too much before. But now that he's going up this opponent, right? It's not like he's making a new suit or he's getting this new super weapon or super power. It's just like he's practicing a different fighting style to be able to fight him better. And I love that, man. But I'm sad we're coming to the end of this. We got like... We got like four or five episodes left, if that, man. And this is some of the greatest TV I've ever watched. I'm sad, but I'm also excited. Karen, this is what's going to bring Matt back to the church, and he's going to end up having to talk to his mom. And I think he is going to, you know, ultimately they're going to have a little bit of back and forth, but he's going to come to an understanding with her, and I think it's going to be for the best. I hope she doesn't die, because if Fisk finds out that's Matt's mom, she, he, you know he uses that, right? He uses family against people, so... I hope she doesn't end up dying. I hope Karen doesn't end up dying. And I hope Foggy doesn't end up dying. Obviously, Matt can't die, right? He's he's the main character. But any of the other ones, I feel like there's a chance they could. Regardless, fantastic stuff. Fantastic episode. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section down below. Like always, if you guys did enjoy this reaction video, make sure to leave a like. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Full reaction will be up on Patreon as well as early access to the next two episodes. If you guys want to check that out, link in the description down below. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you in the next one. What is going on, guys? I hope you all did enjoy that video you just checked out. If you did, make sure to drop a like and comment down below. What is something you guys want to see me react to next on the channel? I want to give a couple quick shout outs to some of my highest tier supporters over on Patreon, man. Shout out to the homie That's So Gordo, the homie Alexander Collins, and the homie Christopher Larimer. Your guys' support is much appreciated. If you guys haven't already and you do want to join the Patreon family, the link is on screen right now, as well as in the description down below. You get early access to a bunch of videos up to two, sometimes even three weeks in advance. 
full length reactions and you get to participate in polls to help decide what we do and what we react to on the channel but i hope you guys all have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one